we're gonna do block yoga today so the first thing you need is blocks right and we've got lots of options now not everybody has these foam blocks there are literally yoga blocks you can get them in cork and all kinds of different styles so the other options you have is to get a paper towel roll this can be used the same way so it's got different sides that are different heights and it might get a little squished but it's just paper towels you can use cans or you can use like if you have a giant book right it's got the same kind of thing going on where you've got one side different heights um, you just don't want anything that'll get damaged but it is meant to be cushioned too so you might want a towel or something to wrap it and if you haven't found those definitely do and we're going to get started i'm going to do our little introduction first and then we'll go from there so once you've got your aids i don't know decorative paper towels i'll put them off to the side you have your water ready oh i'll do my little show here so literally she has a, a green dress but i didn't have anything so i just made a green strap because this is home cosplay yoga right so i've got purple and green and <laughs> she's just a She's just a un misunderstood fairy, so that's what we're going to go with today. Yeah, I know, right? Neopets had a little bit of a resurgence um, a couple weeks ago. There was some art that got really popular. But yeah, I, uh, I have my pets. If you have a pet, we can talk about pets and pet pets and all that. <laughs> so, all right, let's go, guys. So welcome to Block Yoga. And to start off with, why not try and use a block? And if you have a blanket or a pillow, again, using the other workshops that we've done before, feel free to modify using those props. Because again, they all work together to aid us in our practice. So we're gonna start with by trying to sit on a block. You can have it at different heights, right? So you can have it at really high, medium high, or low. This took me a while to figure out. <laughs> and then I like to sit on it. Uh, and then the idea is that you have it so that when you sit, your hips tilt a different way. Now, if this is too high for you, that's fine. You can use nothing or, like I said, use a blanket. There are lots of options. For me, I kind of like sitting on the block because I think my hips do have a little bit of that shift. So figure out if that works for you. We're going to start our yoga session today again with a little bit of a background of my character and... This again is based off of Neopets, which is a very, very old early 2000s online pet website where you play games and customize your pets. And it, it was very, very popular, <laughs> very, very popular. So one of the quotes in this, in the description of it is that for as long as there is light, there is darkness. And as long as there was darkness, there have been dark fairies. So dark fairies existed in the Neopets world. And Judora, who is who I'm cosplaying, is a dark fairy. And the Neopedia says that Judora hides behind a veil of quote unquote moderate evil. So she's supposed to be a villain. And you know I have a soft spot for villains, right? And in this one, it's unknown exactly how she became evil. But at the same time, they say that she does these things and it's all assumptions and in yoga again we have the opportunity to step back and to say is this person being condemned for their actions or for assumptions there's no proof maybe it's just a rivalry between the other fairies i mean you could get super deep into this and i'm sure there's amazing fanfic out there i never really got into neopets fan fiction but that aside <laughs> So think about it this way. Have you ever experienced anger with somebody else or made those assumptions and thought about something just because other people say that it's bad? We all do. We're human. And I love the quote from uh, Obi-Wan in Star Wars. I know we're mixing genres here. But he says, you know, it's always true from a certain point of view. So whose certain point of view do you have? And I think especially with how crazy the political world is around us, thinking about that certain point of view and why some people think what they think is right versus what is actually good and evil is something that we have to continue to fight for. So for today, I want to use this block yoga session to help us to find balance and open ourselves up to other possibilities. So now that we're nice and cozy, Again, in yoga, you have the opportunity to set an intention if you'd like to use this to find balance. 
you can set that. Or if there's any other thing that you would like to focus on today, you can set that intention now. And as always, to seal our intention, we're going to inhale, take our arms up. Exhale, hands together, draw them into your heart. And we're going to do two breaths. First, a cleansing breath. And exhale. And then a really big inhale. And let it go. Start to notice your breath. Is it heavy, slow, is it warm on your breath, or does it feel cool coming out of your mouth? So in this session on blocks as aids, we're going to use them to help find literal balance, of course, and also providing us other opportunities to stretch, while at the same time, Taking a moment to think about the mental balance. Being here with me right now is already a major step forward. So again, thank you. Begin to take your breaths and make them even. Focusing maybe with your hands on the belly as you inhale and exhale. Find your own count. Begin to notice your body and your posture. Maybe roll your shoulders back and down. Maybe adjust your seats. Maybe this doesn't work for you. Find whatever works for you. Remembering that in Rift Wing Designs for Zen, we always use yoga using Bob Ross style, so no pain. And only do what's right for you. You never have to think that you're doing what I'm doing. So. Uh, I just realized this is probably a perfect green screen tie thing, so you can like Photoshop me having two halves. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> Again, we don't take ourselves too seriously here either. So if you fall or make a mistake or something doesn't work for you, just laugh it off. Acknowledge that we learn, and that's the most important part here. All right, now start to do our shoulder rolls. Rolling up, back, down, and forward at your own pace. Again, maybe going slow or fast or pausing and rocking your shoulders back and forth if you find some place that's tight. And then go the other direction. So it's back, up, forward, and down. Again, balance. In yoga, we always do both directions to find balance and to even out our body. All right. And now let's do our neck. Gently rock your head from side to side. You want to do things a little differently today. Again, if you have a neck stretch that works better for you, go right ahead. I'm just slowly rocking my head from side to side. And each time I rock, I go a little further. Again, pausing and maybe, maybe rocking back and forth if I find a place that's tight, which of course there are. And just kind of going back and forth. And if it's comfortable, you are welcome to do a full circle with your neck. Just remember, no pain. And if you have any kind of cervical or spine issues, only do what works for you. Come back to your breath. Inhaling as your head comes up and exhaling as it goes down. And if you're doing full circles, remember to go the opposite direction. Find balance, inhaling up, exhaling down, good. And if you need any other movement with your neck or shoulders, take time to do that now. Find those sticking points. And again, this is your practice. You could do this for the next 50 minutes and no one a, would know because I can't see you, and B, there's nothing wrong with that because you're doing what your body says it needs you to do. All right, let's inhale, arms up. Ooh. And one of the ones that I love now that we've been doing recently is lowering our shoulder blades down when we're doing that reach up. So notice the difference when it's squished in and then back and down, or maybe take your arms into those goal posts 
I love how I've got my Canadian access. The goal posts. <laughs> Take them back. Feel your shoulder blades drawing back together. So one of the things that I need to find balance on is uh, physical therapy. I have to do more of these exercises. I had been neglecting it because my routine changed with COVID. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm actually taking my hands behind me here and just feeling my shoulder blades again. But our routines change and there's nothing wrong with that when you have to take care of yourself. Maybe do some circles here. There's nothing wrong with it if it works for you. So look at, I rotated without rotating my block and then I found imbalance, okay? And if you're doing circles one way, maybe go back the other. Again, if you would join me with my strap practice, you can always do some flossing here, standing or sitting. And if you haven't seen my strap yoga, it's available on YouTube. All right, now that you've done both directions, maybe we'll do a little swimming forward and back here. So opposite arms, right? <laughs> Get your timing together and then try and do it the other way. And I'm going the same direction. So what about going, uh, what? <laughs> try and play with it and get them to swirl the opposite direction. Is this even a thing? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Have fun with it. Yoga is all about listening to your body and trying to do different things, right? Stretching and warming up and feeling what works for you. Okay, how are we doing, guys? So we're going to try and do more more interesting things blocks can be used literally in every yoga position i'm not kidding i was thinking about doing a stump the chump round later where i ask you to give me a pose and i'll show you how to use a block in it these can be an aid but they may not always be great for you so you're gonna have to take time and explore so we're really gonna have a really free form yoga today starting with cat and cow so come on your hands and knees there are so many different ways to use your block here the first one we're going to show you is if you put it on the skinny position. So there's a skinny position. Oh, that's probably better. Skinny. And then, oh my gosh, this is hard to demonstrate. So you put it between your legs. And again, if this is not comfortable, don't do it. But now I've got, let me show you my tail here. We've got the block in between my legs. And we're using our thighs. And maybe you have to rotate it. Maybe it fits better another way, right? Maybe you need to put your knees on a, a blanket for this. Again, if you join me for my blanket yoga. I'm going to take my little wings off because I want you to see me. There we go. That's better. So I've got this between my legs, and I'm using my thighs to keep my knees at that hip distance apart. And then you go into your cow and exhale into your cat. See how that feels. So inhaling up, using your shoulders and your chest here. Exhaling into cat. Inhale into cow. Maybe pointing with your nose a little, but remember to shine the shoulders and chest forward. Exhaling into cat. Focus on your shoulder blades more than your tailbone here. Inhale. Exhale. Notice how your knees and feet change positions. Maybe try doing a couple without the block and see if it's better or worse for you. This is a really exploratory one today, guys. So find what works for you. I'm gonna adjust my mic a little. Keep exploring, maybe introducing some wiggles. Turn this down just a little, that's still good. The thing about wearing costumes is you never know when they're making crinkly sounds. So what works for you, right? We're gonna try that. Now, putting the block back in and you come back to your tabletop, let's try and just do a little bit of elbow twists as well. So you're holding that block in and then without moving your hands, you want to rotate your elbows. This may or may not work for some people and some people hyperextend. So if that's you, be careful not to go too far, but just focus on using your shoulder blades and your arm sockets to rotate the inside the, the dip, what's that thing called? <laughs> the crook of your elbow, the ditch, that's what it's called, the ditch of your elbow. 
pointing out and then twist it in. And if you have to move your hands, that's fine. But by doing it with keeping your hands still, you're actually focusing a lot on the rotation here, if that works for you. So now we've got our cat cow, which you can do with or without the arms. It gives you a totally different stretch if you're going, and it's almost like a little, like a little worm, right? <laughs> which Neo pet does this remind you of? There's about 50 of them, I think. Uh, and so you can always do modifications like that. Another modification, if you really want to challenge, plant your hands down again underneath your shoulders, tuck your toes. And here is where you can just do it like this, or we can do that little micro lift where you're lifting up your knees just, just barely, and you're holding that block in. Now, again, no pain in your wrists here. See if you can hold that. Shoulders back and down, breathing here. This is a good workout for your core right here. All you got to do. Can we hold it for five, four, three, two, and one? Good job. Notice how it feels. Maybe shake it out. Maybe get a drink. Maybe you got to get those wrists. If you need a good um, counter wrist stretch, take your hands and then put them backwards. And you can press down. And that's a great counter stretch. So it might be better with <laughs> So it's like this. And you just breathe. And if you pull it in and lower it, you get a different stretch, but that's, they're good because you're doing a lot of this, so this is a good counter stretch. Yeah, oh my gosh, my, my cords are all over the place today, but that's okay. All right, so we're gonna do it again. This time we're gonna take you into down dog using the block between your legs, again, if it's comfortable for you. So find a place to set it down, come into your tabletop. Man, I really can't do long that way, I gotta do skinny, skinny. Plant your hands, tuck your toes, come into what, what is called loaded beast, right? And then push back into your down dog, holding that together. Your feet may need to be a little closer together. That's fine. In your down dog, remember your heels do not have to touch the ground. Your arms should be straight. Look at where your elbows are. We just did that elbow stretch. Your, the ditch of your elbows should not be pointing forward. They should be pointing to the sides. So circle your elbows out, focus on rolling your shoulders back, heels back, maybe invite a bend in your knees and notice how different that is. And again, if this doesn't work, you can remove it and just work on your down dog, nothing wrong with that. Maybe you pedal your knees here if you don't have that block in. And if you do have it in, which I'll just readjust, you have the option to use the block between your legs for a flow. So coming forward into plank, <laughs> try and lower through chaturanga, not going too low, keeping your legs off the ground, coming into up dog, pushing back into down dog. You can do an entire flow like this and it's very challenging and maybe it feels good for you. Or well, maybe it's not. <laughs> Play around with that for a couple moments. And then we're all gonna come down into child's pose because that was a lot of work already i don't like this here let's try this again again let me know if it's too muffled oh i'm already breathing heavy <laughs> so child's pose there are so many options just like savasana with the blankets there's a lot of options for savasana and child's pose with blocks so again okay first let's do the block under your rear. So again, usually you're going to want it on the lowest setting. So it's kind of like you're keeping your feet a little wider and you're just resting on it. And maybe that helps with your hips. Maybe you need to be a little higher up if that works for you. The other option, again, you could do one, you could do all of them. So we've got it under our hips. You walk your hands forward, you lower your chest down. So for me, at this point, because my hips are higher, my chest isn't touching the ground. So maybe I try a block under my chest without ruining the mic. There we go. So that gives me a little more support. 
you have the option of a second, third, or just a single block under your forehead. So if you don't have one behind you, you can rest back on your feet, walk forward, and maybe, maybe your head can be down like that. So I'm just showing you with my arm up, right? Maybe that feels good to have your forehead resting on a block. A little less pressure on your neck. Or you can do all three. Or here's another one. You can have a block for your hands. So you can have one under each hand and go down. And you can have your hands wrapped around the blocks or you can have them resting on top of the blocks. I like to wrap around. Give me a little grip here. This. This, I feel a lot tighter on my shoulder blades in the, um, the corner of my shoulder where the joint connects, which I had an injury. So for me, this one won't be as comfortable. But there's other things to try. <laughs> this is great, isn't it? So how about we take our block and we can do a second level. So medium. And you just put one block out. And you use that for your arms or hands. So your hands are together now. Different stretch. This actually feels okay. Or maybe for me doing that one, I want it under my chest and my hands. Oh, yeah. So take a few moments just to play around with how you can use your blocks. You can also do your closed legged child's pose if you want, pulling your knees together and try the same thing. Maybe both high, maybe both low, maybe a different height for your forehead, maybe something else for your chest. Again, the world is your oyster and all you need to do is figure out what you need for your body. So give you a couple more seconds to just find it. And once you find something that works, just kind of melt in and relax. I like this one with the seat and the chest. Breathing. Noticing how your shoulders feel. We've done a lot of shoulder stretches already. And now that we've done that, we're going to do the same thing, more block options. <laughs> so uh, grab a drink if you need to. We're going to go back into tabletop. This time we're going to put blocks under hands. So earlier we did it between our legs. The second time we're going to try it with our hands. A lot of poses, if your hands are near the ground, can be aided with blocks, again, on different heights depending on what pose you're in. And we're only gonna go through a few here. I could probably do an entire day workshop on blocks. Uh, so the first one we're gonna do, again, is placing our hands on them during tabletop. So maybe you need to rotate them longer or shorter. The idea is here, this is like, um, it's an adjusted tabletop. So notice how my back is not as flat as when I'm down like this. It gives me a different stretch, but it also can alleviate some of the pressure on my wrists because less weight, a lot more is getting pushed to the back. So maybe try a couple of cat cows here. Inhaling a cow, exhaling a cat. Notice how different this is. This is better for you. Remembering to shine your chest through your shoulders and exhale, move your shoulder blades forward. Focusing on your breathing here. And if you don't like it, go back to what works for you. Okay. And then you have an option here to go through our flow again. So these under your hands can cause balance issues. Be very careful and only do what works for you. So let's try from tabletop, tucking our toes underneath trying to go first into that loaded dog, right? So that beast form. So you're just lifting your knees a little bit. This actually feels a little easier for me, right? <laughs> and then lower it down. We're not going to hold that unless you want to, you can. The next one we're going to do is trying to push into our blocks, using the blocks to push into down dog. 
So this again is an assisted down dog. Feel how that feels. Maybe this is better for you. Maybe you need your blocks wider or maybe you need them closer together. Remember to keep a generous bend in your knee and focus on pushing your hips down and back and looking towards your toes. I mean, this form looks pretty good for me. What do you think? <laughs> I think I get a little purple going on. So this is an assisted down dog. You can stay there um, or you can look up here. So I'm gonna show you another option for assisted down dog without blocks, but that is sometimes important if you have any impediments is using the wall. So it's the same thing as the blocks, right? You are using that to try and get into a shape, moving your feet. And sometimes instead of going into down dog, doing this and just stretching your shoulders and lowering your chest feels amazing. So again, there's no wrong way to do it as long as there's no pain, right? Okay, so let's try that again. We're in our tabletop. Find a place for your hands, and again, you don't need to use the blocks. You can put it between your legs if that one works better. We're going to tuck our toes under, go through that loaded beast into down dog. Now again, here we're going to try going through a flow. The flow means that you're going to go forward into your plank. So this is a high, high, high plank. Look at this, right? Then when you're lowering into chaturanga, you're keeping your elbows in, but only going to where they touch your ribs. Then you inhale into up dog. Again, this one helps your up dog because your legs and up dog should never touch the ground, just the tops of your feet. And then exhale, tucking your toes under back to down dog. Okay, this could be too much for your arms and shoulders. If it is, take a break. If you're with me, let's do it again. Forward plank, shoulders back and down, holding here. Lowering into chaturanga, keeping your elbows in when they touch your ribs, stay there. Then go into your up dog, tucking your toes, pushing back into down dog. Good job. Now let's walk forward. Everybody, we're going to meet in a forward fold. Blocks are fantastic for forward fold. As you can see, my hands touch the ground and I'm not even warmed up. If you need them higher, you can adjust the setting to whatever works for you. It's most important in your forward fold to keep your neck loose. So you should be looking down or at your belly button. Shake your head yes and no. Maybe adjust the blocks, try different heights. Keep a bend in your knees here as you're maybe pedaling them out. Focus on loosening your neck and back. Try another one. Try different heights, see how it feels. Maybe you try on the ground. <laughs> it's whatever works for you. And then we're gonna inhale into halfway lift. So normally for a half lift, you put your hands on your shins. You could go to a higher setting and try and get a flat back using your blocks. And then exhale, fold. <laughs> There's no wrong way to do it, right? So focus on trying to do a couple of halfway lifts and folds. And then we're gonna inhale, come all the way up. Hands up above. Draw them down and then fold again. And from here, we're going to do a couple of side twists. So there are a million different side twists. I'm just going to put a block aside so you can see here. When you do a side twist, you will always plant a hand. And theoretically, you could touch the ground. But if it isn't available, don't do that. So maybe you just plant a hand and, and open up, right? That's all side twists are using the block, right? Oh my gosh, this little green thing. It's like a scarf. Okay, see? And then you can plant the hand and twist the other way. Again, you're allowed to bend your knees here. So whenever they invite you into a twist or an arm balance, you have the opportunity to use that block, okay? So let's do this with some lunges now. I'm gonna adjust my camera again. A little bit higher, okay, that should be good. So we're forward, stand up, maybe come into mountain pose for just a moment. Roll those shoulders back and down. Feel your body. Again, this is a lot of arms and shoulders today. 
I know in the past we've done a lot of hips. This one is much more in the arms. So for here, we're going to go into our first lunge. So take one foot forward, step the other one back. Your heel can be parallel, so they're on rails. And you can just feel how that feels here. Your arms can go anywhere to start. They can be up. You can do a warrior one if that feels better to you, where your back foot is at a 45 degree angle. But I'm just going to do a lunge. So my hips are parallel. My feet are parallel. Everything's facing forward. Really focus on twisting that hip joint so it's all forward. Okay. So in low lunge, you have the option of adjusting your height and putting your hands on your knees. You also have the option of taking both blocks on the highest setting and then kind of dipping into a lower lunge, right? So this is getting close to a lizard. So that's what it looks like. Again, this may or may not work if your hips are not as loose, but you, the blocks could help. The other option is if you need it even higher and you have multiple blocks, check this out. Flat one on the, the fattest setting here. And you put another block on top. Look at that now. I've got another four inches. A little tougher to balance, but maybe I need that extra height. For paper towels, it's a little harder. You would probably want to put a thick book on the bottom and then place the paper towels on top. Okay, so while I'm here, all of a sudden my hands are only on the inside. So the inside of the leg, place one hand down, come into a twist. See how that works? And then come back out, and then you can do the other side, so your hand is on the outside. And this takes balance, but you can do an opposite twist. So think about our balance of tension. Most poses have a counter pose, even if it's more difficult. Come back to your lunge, and let's go into our lizard. So lizard is very, very intense on the groin and under leg area. So in lizard, you use these, put both blocks in between. I'll turn a little bit here. So you've got your leg forward, both blocks in between holding you here, and that's pretty much lizard. In lizard, you have the option of lowering your knee, straightening your foot, staying here, or maybe lowering down. If this works for you, oh my goodness, my height. <laughs> if it works for you, you can also go down to your forearms. So I've got my blocks down, knee down, foot flat, you can put your forearms on the blocks, maybe straighten back that leg a little more. So you're getting a very intense leg stretch here. And again, more options to keep lowering, but you don't have to. It's what works for you. And when you're here, let that neck go. Breathing. And it is intense, so we're not going to stay too long. Use the blocks to help walk your way back up. And then if you want to counter stretch, you can use... Now, this is like where you're walking with the blocks. So notice how I'm stepping my hands back to do a reverse stretch here. You could even put one behind your bum and sit on it, right? I mean, there's no wrong way unless there's pain. So I'm using the block behind me to counter stretch here. Balance. And then come back forward. And hey, look at we're back down on our knees. So option here to go through your flow with or without blocks. Tucking your toes under, down dog. Inhaling into plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. And again, you can go into your child's pose at any time. From here, we're going to go forward again. Coming into our forward fold, finding that option that works for you. Another option, if you're super flexible, we can start to put it under our feet. So you can stand on, <laughs> stand on the blocks here and do a forward fold so your hands dangle more. Or maybe they touch the ground. Or maybe you have multiple blocks and you just want to be high. That's fine. <sighs> Let your neck go. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up. Look how tall I am. <laughs> All right, exhale down. I'm going to get off of these things. So you could do a whole bunch of things standing on here too. But for now, we're just going to go to lunging on the other side. So take the opposite foot forward. Find your lunge here. So start with a high lunge. 
if you want to do your warrior one, you can. I'm going to be doing a lunge. So my hips and feet are parallel facing forward. Arms and shoulders can be anywhere you want. Just feel it out. Maybe rock a little bit. Get comfortable here. And then we're going to start to lower into that lower lunge. So use your blocks. Maybe adjust your legs. They can be wider or they can be closer together. They can be further apart. Use your blocks and again, play around with the different height settings and find what works for you to give you a nice little lunge stretch. Breathing here. Again, play around as much as you want. A couple more seconds. And we're going to do our side twists. So first on the inside, find a place to plant your blocks on the inside of their leg. Use your weight on your opposite hand. Inhale to twist. Breathing here. You don't have to look at your raised hand. If it's more comfortable, you can look down. Again, no pain. I love that both my blocks and my outfit and my little tie thing and my mat perfectly match. All right, come back down. Now to the other side. So block on the outside of your leg and try and twist the other way. Notice how I have to, to shift my back foot to have that work. It's fine. Your feet don't have to be fixed. Breathing. And then back to center. Now we're going to go into our lizard. So both blocks on the inside of your leg inside of your leg, inside of your foot. I'm just turning so you can see here. Okay. And then you can stay here. You can lower that back knee and plant your foot down and you can stay here or you can try and lower down onto your blocks at whatever height is comfortable for you. So as you can see here, the idea is just to get that nice groin stretch without pain. I think maybe you need a blanket underneath your legs. Maybe you can't do that much and that's okay. Let your neck go and breathe into it. I'll stay here for a few more breaths. And then you use those blocks to gently come back out, no pain. And we're going to use them with our hands to walk backwards into the counter stretch. So walking your hands back, lowering down, finding a good counter stretch. It doesn't have to look like mine. It's really whatever works for you guys. And can you believe we only have 20 more minutes to go? Whew. Okay. So let's come back up here. And oh, hey, surprise, we're back into our tabletop. So again, option here for flow. You can try something else or you can just hang out in child's pose. If you're with me, I'm putting my hands on the blocks, pushing back up in the down dog, feeling this one out. We're only going to have two more. So if you want those flows, put them in here. Forward into plank, lower and keeping your elbows tight for chaturanga, coming into your up dog, keeping your legs off the ground, tipping your feet underneath and pushing back into your down dog. All right. And then again, take two breaths here. A deep breath in, let it go. Walk your feet forward. If you're in child's pose, we're coming into our forward fold. Find what forward fold works for you. A little bit more warm now, so see I can touch the ground. And then we're gonna inhale halfway lift. Or maybe you do that halfway lift with the blocks. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up. Hands come together. We're going to step wider here on our mat. With our hands together, lower into a squat. So I'm coming down, widening my legs now that we've warmed them up a little bit. And this is called a yogi squat. So a yogi squat, your elbows come and touch your knees and you hold yourself here. But again, this isn't available for everyone. So one option is block. You can put the block underneath to hold you up. So it can be in high, it can be in medium, it can be in low. 
Again, you don't want too much groin stretch. And if you can do it without a block, you're welcome to, but for some poses, they keep you here for a long time and this really helps. So find that yogi squat that works for you. Shoulders back, hands pressing together. Breathe here. A little longer. Okay. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be serious. Let's stay here just a little longer. So we went over three places for blocks so far. Under our hands, between our legs, and under our feet. The other option is between our hands. So if you don't wanna press your hands together or you need more space, you can go like this. And if you want, we can try and raise up. Ooh, I'm gonna go on my knees just so I don't have to readjust. So when you're doing things like the sun salutations, your hands can be up like this, holding the block, to give you a little bit more of a workout with your hands and shoulders. So when you're doing those twists, you can use a block in between your hands standing. Huh? There's so many cool things you can do, right? It's kind of crazy. All right, so if you're still in your yogi squat or wherever you are, we're all gonna come back and we're gonna do one more stretch with our legs. So from our squat, we're going into the wide-legged squat and you might have seen people do these crazy like ninja stretches here. I really like to use blocks for the ninja stretches. So you're going from side to side with a wide leg. And let me tell you, I'm feeling it from those stretches we did. But I'm using the blocks to aid me in keeping my balance and feeling my legs instead of having to work and press in my wrists. So maybe do a couple of those. Again, if it's available, the full version is with your hands together, or maybe your hands together to block, right? And you can do it with just balance. But it's not available for everyone. So use the blocks in whatever way aids you to complete your stretches. Oof, okay, that's enough. <laughs> and I'm just gonna go into a wide-legged forward fold here. So again, option to use them to plant out your hands. Look at, I'm putting my forearms on them. That's cool, whatever works. Keep your knees bent. Don't lock your knees. Breathe here. Whew. So all of a sudden we've done our arms and shoulders and now we've really done our legs and groin. So I think we can call that done, huh? Use your blocks. Find a way to come back down. Um, I don't mean that. Oh my goodness. Uh, we're going to come to standing and do one balance pose just to show you that. So balance poses, again, you can use this while you're doing balance poses to hold the block in between. You also can stand on the block. So when you're doing things with one foot, it's very, it adds difficulty. Let's just put it that way. So I've got the block on the ground and I can stand on it. Maybe stand on both to start, just in case. So now, oh, hey, look at that, perfect, okay. So, I'm sorry guys, this mic is not appreciating my costume here. Okay, so what I've got going on now, besides a crazy costume snafu, is I'm standing on these blocks. There, that's better. So now, try doing balance like this. Again, be safe. Maybe have a cushion or a couch or something if you need to fall. Use the wall to hold yourself up. But you can do standing balance trying to get into, we're gonna do tree pose. So start to shift your weight into one foot. Okay, so I'm using left foot. And you can just lift that other foot. Just feel how it feels. There's not as much of an option to do a kickstand here, but you can place your leg on your lower leg or again, if it's available, you can place it in your upper leg. I am actually leaning on the wall here. I'm, I'm cheating, because it's, it's more difficult. For some reason, all I'm doing is standing on the block. Obviously, with a paper towel roll, this doesn't really work. <laughs> again, a book would be recommended here, a thick book or two. Okay? The added challenge, in addition to standing on a block, is closing your eyes, right? And then all of a sudden your balance just goes wacko for no reason, right? <laughs> well, it's because your eyes are closed. And you could do it with your hands holding the block in front or in back 
or wiggly wobblies. So come back down, shake it out. If you're with me and you've got your block or your book, you can try it on the other side. So all I'm doing is I've shifted my weight and I've lifted my foot. I'm just feeling how it feels. And then maybe you come into your tree. Maybe you find, again, I'm holding the wall here. <laughs> maybe you can find that balance. Ooh, no, I can't. <laughs> Don't lock your knees in balance poses. Keep that knee bent, which makes it more challenging, but less prone for injury. There we go. Again, you do you. There's no wrong way unless there's pain or injury. <laughs> Put that little one there. And my leg is shaking, guys. This is not easy. All right, let it go. Step down, feel how it feels. So you can do anything there. You could do warrior threes. You can do any standing movements. You can do twists. And again, you can always just stand on the ground and use this holding it here or holding it here. Woo. There we go. When you're doing your stretches. There's no wrong way. Have fun with it, okay? I love that rhymed. <laughs> All right, so we're done, guys. Let's start cooling down. Get a drink. Come back down. <sighs> okay. And so now we're going to... I guess I'll show you, there are, again, so many poses, and we only have another 10 minutes. So I'm just going to show you what you can do with bridge, and then we're going to cool down. And again, if you would like to have me do another workshop on blocks, I am glad to, because there are so many other cool things for us to do using these. They're just super, super helpful. Uh, sometimes you can get them from gyms. They all sell old ones, especially with COVID. If they're not using them, they might sell it to you, and you can just like quarantine them for a couple of weeks. Um, or you can buy them online or you can make them again you can duct tape books together or the, the recommendation was duct tape VHS cassettes together <laughs> and again you might find them uh, usually if it's secondhand these things are pretty pretty easy to sanitize so I wouldn't really worry about germs but they are thick foam blocks I probably should have said that at the beginning <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to go into our wheel, uh, our bridge, not our wheel, but you can use it in wheel too. So one of the big options here for all of the on your back stretches is, again, if it's comfortable, you can put it between your legs. And for things like boat, for coming down, for pulling your knees in, you can just use it in all of those normal cool downs that we'll do in other yoga sessions. So for me, I'm going to be coming down here with it between my legs and when you have it between your thighs your upper legs and you plant your hands take a moment just to feel your body on the ground plant your hands try to tuck your feet in so that your heels are near your bum it may or may not work because you have a block in between your legs and then when you are pressing down in your shoulders and your hands and your feet and lifting into your bridge Notice how you automatically press together the block. This is amazing. This is what you're supposed to do to keep your legs from flaying open. They should be together. And sometimes if you do it without the aid of the block, you may not be doing that. Hold it as long as you can and then let it down, exhaling. Okay, so that's one way of using your block. And I'll do it this way just to show you what it looks like. Ready? So I just keep it between my legs as I'm in my bridge and hold it there as I come down. So you can keep doing that. Another option that's really, really good is uh, one where the block holds you up. So you plant your hands, plant your feet, tuck them in by your tailbone, press your shoulders down, and as you lift, notice this little gap here. I can put on the lowest setting the block underneath it's a little higher than my tailbone and it's holding my hips. So you should find a sweet spot where it's not pressing on your spine, but that it's still holding you up. See that? Then you don't have to focus on the core. You can focus on the stretch and you can stay here a lot longer. You can also do it on higher settings. Just be aware it does touch your spine. So you want no pain. This one is fine for a paper towel roll. <laughs> no problem with any of these using your paper towels. I mean, we knew they'd be valuable during COVID, but not yoga valuable, right? Okay, so you can do that as well. 
There's also options for both wheel and um, bridge to put your feet on them, right? So you're tucking them in so the block should actually be touching your behind here. And then you can use that. Ooh, and that gives you a totally different stretch all of a sudden, right? So for a wheel, imagine that. You can do hands or feet for a wheel. Again, just want to be careful. They should not slide. Okay, so that's another option you've got. I'm just checking my notes here. Well, hands, thighs, under back, feet, or between legs. Okay, we did it. How does that feel, guys? So let's cool down. If you need any other stretches right now, such as twists, you can do that. You can keep the block in between your leg, pull your feet up, maybe, maybe twist out your back side to side, or maybe we're just starting to come into Savasana. Ooh. There's so many different ways to use blocks in Savasana. So I'll show you a couple. The first is the same place you had your block on bridge. You can, as you're down, so it's normal Savasana corpse pose, you're just laying flat. You can do a little mini back bend by placing that block back underneath you and extending your feet. Now this is a deep bend and it may or may not work for you, but you can. You can also place your head on a block or a pillow, right? That's fine. You can take the blocks. Some people really like this. Take the blocks and put them at the end and put your feet on the blocks so it feels like you're grounding your feet down. Or honestly, you could just put your feet on the wall to get that feeling. So now your feet are grounded on the blocks. There are also the option, if you have blankets and bolsters, we've done this one before, it's called Queen's Ramp. It works better if you have a cushion between the blocks and yourself. But you put one on your medium height, one on your high height. And actually, paper towel rolls will work better for this because then they're squishy and my blocks are not. So good job, guys. So then what happens is, oh, I think it's lowest and high maybe. Again, you can play around with it. But the idea is you lean back and your head goes on the high one. Oh yeah, so lowest for me works good. And this goes underneath your shoulder blades. I think I'm gonna stay here. So find what works for you. Again, there's no wrong way. Begin to settle down. Noticing all the weird ways your body has moved with the aid of the block. Where's your breathing? If it's labored, begin to slow it down. Notice how your body feels. Relax your feet and toes. Relax your legs. Try and relax your hips, maybe shift them one more time, just noticing that deep stretch you had. And then relax your belly and your chest your arms, fingers, wrists, shoulders. Come up to your neck, relaxing that neck. Maybe again, rocking it side to side one more time. Release the tongue from the roof of your mouth. Relax your jaw. Relax your cheeks and your eyes. And relax the space in between your eyes. Relax your head and the whole of your body. And I'll give you a couple moments. Again, if you have any thoughts, just acknowledge them and let them shift away. And I'll call you out on the other side.
begin to breathe a little deeper. And if you're coming out with me, start to invite gentle movement into your body. And if you'd like to remain here, you can do so. And if you're waking up, roll around your ankles and wrists, inviting movement, maybe coming into a big body stretch, raising your hands up above, stretching your toes, deep breath in. Mm. And as you're ready, roll onto one side, staying curled up in a ball for a couple more moments as I provide you with these last thoughts. So in Neopets, the Fairy Jadora provided prizes for quests that the players completed. So even though some people may be called bad, they still may have goodness inside and they might give you treasures. <laughs> so as long as there's been light, there's been darkness, and we know that both exist in the world. We've gone through activity and stillness today as well. We've used blocks to explore and aid our practice in new ways. Have you found your balance? Have you opened yourself up to seeing new things? Again, try different things. Don't make assumptions. Don't think you don't need help, right? And perhaps as you go forward with your day, you can step back and consider trying new and different things to aid you both in your practice and in your life. And on an inhale, start to roll up and come back into a seat. It can be on a block or just a normal comfy seat. As you come to seat, roll the shoulders back and down. You can keep your eyes closed or invite a gentle gaze. Come back to your intention. If it was balance, do you want to continue this going forward? And if not, you're welcome to set a new intention now. And then take your hands up, inhale, exhale. Let's put them down one more time. Sweep them back up on the inhale. Hands together and then draw them to heart center. Two breaths, just like we started. Inhale and exhale. And then we'll seal our practice with a deep inhale and let it all go. <sighs> this has been Black Yoga with Rifting Designs, and I thank you for practicing with me today. Take your thumbs and knuckles to your forehead, thanking yourself as I thank you for sharing your practice with me today. The light and love in me honors and welcomes the light and love in all of you. Thank you again for being here. Namaste. And again, we'll be doing a workshop on myofacial release and balls in the future. We've got pillows coming up and maybe I'm thinking about doing a wall too. So again, if you haven't seen previous ones, go check out my YouTube channel, Riftween Designs. And always come back to me Saturdays at noon here on Twitch. And I'm glad to see you next week. Thanks for practicing with me and enjoy your weekend, guys. Take care.